here we have the Armour Granite 4x4 3S BLX. Welcome to the video. I reviewed this RC car a year ago when I first bought it. But I can assure you this review will be better because if you're thinking of buying this car you'll know what you're in for as in what it's going to be like after a year this is the V2 so the second generation one there's actually just been a new one come out which is the V3 of course here's a quick glance at that anyway back to this one So often people modify RC cars to make them look different and I can honestly say I haven't got bored of this look, the looks of this RC car even after a whole year so that's a good sign. That's obviously just my opinion, I just like the look of it and yeah. Although my favourite cars from Armour looks wise are probably Senton or the Mojave. But I bought this one for just because it's more practical. Monster trucks, good option to go for. So straight up, you'll notice the shell fits on really nicely. And the shell, it's got nice crisp lines which make it really strong. And you notice straight away also that the it's very thick, sort of beefy looking which is great uh, because it's strong slightly heavier but it goes like a stabbed rat really fast so you're not going to notice the weight honestly so the uh, the inside of the car is very neatly laid out very easy to work on look at this so the drive shaft hopefully you can see, is spring-loaded so you literally can just pop it out almost like a piece of Lego, it's mad but it's still really strong so that's a big upside and this box here under the fan contains most of the electrics in a watertight box so very neat completely waterproof although I wouldn't submerge it so overall the build quality is really robust, strong and well built but there's some downsides to look out for what you want to look out for is I think after about six months I don't know if you can see but on the back of the body shell you'll get holes when you tip it over or do back flips and that's just what happens um, and the shock absorbers, <laughs> I know they're a major component of the RC car, but I'm afraid they will leak. I'm not the only one that's had this problem, so I've had to send these back to get them rebuilt. If you're thinking of buying the Armour Granite, just expect to have to rebuild them, or put new seals in, or get new shock bodies, or just whole new shocks, because they're just not very well built and that unfortunately is pretty much the only thing that lets the car down to be perfectly honest so, after a year again what's it like to work on because it's an RC car you will need to do repairs it's just inevitable it's just what happens look at this very easy to work on you can just unplug the wires like Lego almost and even the drive shaft is spring loaded, look at that, which means you can just pop it out again like Lego, it's kind of mad really. There's a tab on there which you pull to get the whole entire gear system out. You literally just need one screw. <coughs> so the repairs I've done are new shock absorbers, I've taken out the gearbox just to just for maintenance <laughs> inside the actual gearbox you wouldn't get any grip 
actually inside the gears because it's covered nicely, which is great. I should probably put those wires back on. <laughs> yeah, so, conclusion, very easy to work on. Comes with the instruction manual, which tells you a fair bit. And, honestly, there's a lot of YouTube tutorials, but you should be able to figure it out. So, in here I have the batteries that I have. Overlander, 5000 mAh. This is a 3S battery, and it lasts a really, really long time. Um, I think anywhere between 15 minutes and 40 minutes, which for an RC car that's really, really impressive. <laughs> Because it's a brushless motor and it's very efficient, um, it just lasts a long time. And then we have the 2S battery, 4000 milliamp hour. That will probably last between 15 minutes and half an hour, which is really good for RC cars. Usually you don't get any more than 20 minutes. But then again, you don't, I don't really drive it like a maniac. <laughs> I mainly take it to the RC track. So, speak of the devil, let's have a look at some driving footage. Driving an RC car, especially one that goes as well as this one, you know, it goes really fast. Driving an RC car is so addictive, it's actually really difficult to just put the controller down. <laughs> I've lent it to um, my friend Tom's Farm Life a few times and <laughs> he won't he won't want to give it back, it's just so fun. Because of the shock absorbers, I haven't driven it as much as I'd like to. I've had the shock absorbers off it for about six months because I had a problem with the company I bought it from. But anyway, the times I have been driving it, I've noticed it's very fast, accelerates really quickly, handles pretty well, especially for a monster truck. Although if you're doing like, I don't know, 30 plus miles an hour, and then you do a sharp turn, it'll tip over. Well, of course to drive the RC car, you need one of these, you need the controller. So, let's talk about that. Um, I've heard people complain that it's not as responsive as they'd like, but those kind of people are YouTubers who have like 30 plus RC cars to choose from, and I've only got two and I feel that it's perfectly fine so yeah and it's all down to opinion I think it's nice and ergonomic fits well in your hand loving the big steering wheel and throttle rate very useful I really like that feature because if you turn it down you save a lot of power 
which is why with the 3S battery you're getting like 40 minutes out of it. So, yeah, I think it's good, perfectly. I think it's honestly perfectly fine. So, will you need to modify it? Well, um, if you aren't worried about avoiding the warranty, then I would recommend putting a rear wing on there just to protect the back of the shell. And if you're driving, if you're driving really wet conditions, I'd recommend putting some mud guards around that, which I haven't done because I don't want to avoid the warranty. So technically, no. If you don't mind the shell getting holes in it, and if you drive mostly in dry conditions, I think you'll be alright. So price, that's probably going to be important to people. Uh, the car, what you get in the box is the car itself and the controller and that's it. And that's £300. I'd honestly say that's a little bit overpriced but I'm not going to lie, this is one of my favourite things I own completely. So it's, you know, it's, it's kind of worth it. On top of that you have to buy batteries, charger and recommended by a lipo safe sack as well because you really don't want lipo fires. So in total this was £400. <laughs> so there we have it guys after one year of ownership I would recommend this RC car if you're willing to buy new shock absorbers because it's really annoying, it's the only thing that lets it down. It's it's a great car otherwise. So yeah, build quality is good. Slightly overpriced I'd say. But Armour do make some really good products. Apart from the shocks, really annoying. Uh, <laughs> RC you in the next one, <laughs> get it? RC. Yeah, I'll see you in the next one. RC, RC. <laughs>